This is still the Polity and Religion Live from the Abuja Studios of Kaftan TV. Joining me now to do justice to some of the uh, issues making the rounds in the nation today is an APC chieftain, Ambassador Samuel A. Danjuma. You're welcome to the program. Thank you very much. It's good yeah. to have you on the uh, program uh, again today. And um, I must say again, happy birthday to you in areas. Thank you very uh, much. I hope you uh, came along with our own piece <laughs> of the uh, birthday cake. Sure, sure, sure. Thank you. All right, let's go straight to uh, the reason why we are here today. Um, the uh, back and forth between the Economic and the Financial Crimes Commission, the EFCC and the embattled former governor of um, Kogi State, His Excellency Alhaji Adoza Yahaya uh, Bello seems to have no end uh, in sight. Particularly, uh, let's, I want us to take a look at um, some of the excerpts from the uh, judgment at the, uh, delivered at the Federal High Court uh, sitting in Abuja uh, three days ago where Justice um, Emeka Nguite, uh, where he uh, set aside um, former Governor Bello's um, application, uh, application to, you know, uh, request to set aside EFCC's um, arrest uh, warrant, warrant uh, which uh, uh, right now uh, it makes it makes um, it puts uh, former Governor Yahaya Bello in a place where you know he has no choice now than to you know present himself uh, to the court. What are your thoughts on this? Because you know a lot of discussions, a lot of back discussions have gone back and forth on this very on this very um, issue. Um, some Nigerians are saying that um, Yahaya Governor Yahaya Adosa Bello was well in his rights to have um, you know. Uh, evaded the arrest or refused the uh, to you know uh, present himself to the EFCC and some Nigerians were saying that um, regardless he should have um, presented himself if he had no skeleton in his cupboard. What are your thoughts on this? Um, thank you very much once again. Um, I think I remember I said it on this program that I was one of the happiest person when the um, EFCC chairman. Mm -hmm the new EFCC chairman, a lawyer, was appointed to head that organization. And why was I happy? Because I felt that the right things would be done legally this time around. Mm. Now, it is well known that we all say judiciary is the hope of the common man. Let me give you, let's play out a scenario here. Okay. When the same high court in Kogi asked the EFC chairman to come to Kogi an answer why he should not be committed to prison for content of court mm. orders. What did he do? He rushed to the Court of Appeal in Abuja to set aside that judgment against him. All I ask, I've said this repeatedly, it's not just about His Excellency, the former governor of Kogi State, Elijah Dezabelo. We should all think about this. If we all think that we should throw away the water with the, the, the bad, maybe with the bad, well, bad water, then we should know that this can happen to any other person. But now, I'm coming, I'm driving somewhere. Okay. If the EFC chairman knows that his rights can be protected by the court, why is he against the rights of the former governor being protected by the same court? I've said this repeatedly. Peter Odili, former governor of River State, enjoys the same court order. Mm. The, the president minister of the state for defense enjoys the same court order. The former minister, governor of Zambia State, enjoys the same court order. Why is it different in the case of Yahya Bello? I remember that the same court said that Yahya Bello can be tried with the leave from a court of competent jurisdiction, but not arrested. So now, if you have already gone to court to try His Excellency, the former governor of Kogi State, on charges, it is presumed by the court that every man is innocent until be proven, proven yeah. guilty by a court of competent jurisdiction. Mm. So that means you already have the evidence. The essence of arrest is for you to be able to get gather evidence and investigate. For you to have gone to court, that means you already have evidence enough to prosecute the person for you to go to court. So if truly you have gotten enough evidence to prosecute the person before going to court, and the court have said no need arresting this person, but you can call, you can ask him to come to court to answer to charges against him. Why are you so interested in arresting this man? Mm. The man has already said that he is not scared of it. He is a law abiding citizen of the federal. Of Nigeria. He was mm -hmm. former the chief, the chief executive officer of, 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 of Koki State. State. He knows the law. And that's why what did he do first? See, people go about, one thing I, I can tell you for free is that all the protests 
in support of His Excellency Adé Isabelo are not sponsored. There are people who are out of the love and, 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 and desire to see the betterment of this man are all protesting to say, no, what we want is do the right thing, go through by the books, not jumping the gun. Mm -hmm. So it's different from what we see from the other side. We are people who just want to know the Abelu at all costs because they presume that the Abelu did not allow the anointed Messiah to become governor. You can see what has been happening in Kogiste for the past few days. You can see that Yabelu did no mistake in bringing the present governor to power. For the first time in less than four days, after adoption of our students, they got their freedom. Mm. It has not been done anywhere. So this shows that this is a man who is prepared, who has a master plan for the state, and he has bringing somebody who fits in, who, have been, who can... So, I still tell Nigerians, instead of crucifying this man, the ability should be celebrated. Okay, um, you made a lot of uh, you made a lot of uh, of points, but I just want to take out um, two from your submission. You said if you said the uh, the federal the high the state high court in Kogi State invited the EFCC chairman yes to present himself and um, you know explain why he should not be committed uh, to uh, the prison for contempt of court and he ran to the, uh, the to the appeal to the court of appeal to set aside that, that judgment. judgment why didn't the former governor of uh, Kogi state his excellency Adoza Yahaya Belu also go to the to the to the court of competent jurisdiction to set aside the arrest warrant the EACC have beautiful mm -hmm. Because you just because these are these these are supposed to be you know two uh, uh, scenarios of same of, of, of same situation uh, right now. There's a court judgment against the EFCC chairman. The yes. EFCC chairman went to the appeal court to set it aside. Yes. There's a there's an arrest warrant against um uh, uh, His Excellency. Against, uh, yeah, against uh, yes. His Excellency uh, he should have gone to the court to set that uh, warrant aside. That's, also. That, that's what he did. He applied to the same judge. I'm ready to come to court to answer questions, but first, set aside this judgment. Mm. This um, not even a judgment. Set aside this arrest warrant you have given to the EFCC to arrest me. Mm. And the judge, out of anger of feeling that um, His Excellency disobeyed him or was not respect, did not respect him to, sh to come to court. Now, you don't expect him to just walk into the court or uh, walk into their hands to allow them to have the free day, what they want to. As the SEC come out, it's okay for the fact that the case is now in court, the arrest warrant is no more standing. His Excellency, former governor of, uh, of Okogi State, appear in court. And I see put it to you, up to now as we speak, there is no written, I stand to be corrected, but I know of the fact that there is no written summon from the EFCC to His Excellency Adeza Yayabelu. Mm. All that we see is just this media trial. And this is not good for our, um, our, uh, our criminal justice uh, system. It's not the best. We shouldn't come to... We have seen a lot of this happen. Uh, so former governor of Social State stole billions of naira, former governor of this former minister. And, and at the end of the day, it ends on the pages of newspaper, on, on WhatsApp, and on social media. And that is all. Mm. By the time they get to court, you find that at the end of the day, they don't even have a novel video. I gave an instance of the former Attorney General of Federation who was even extradited from, from, from the foreign land back to the country to face uh, persecution. Uh, and, and at the end of the day, the EFCC came to court to say they don't even have enough evidence mm. to prosecute this man. So do we continue this way? Well, Why not? The form, I, I, I can remember the, the, the Senate President said that even in developed clients, for 10 years, the government can be going after you, getting facts, getting information, so that by the time they eventually come out, they would have gotten everything that is needed to nail you. nail you. But up till now, what we see here is the next thing, immediately they presume as, a, as, 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 an, as this, the next thing they hit to the court. Now, so if you feel that the appeal court will give you judgment to affect your own fundamental human rights, why should the case be different when it comes to the former governor? The same court has said, you can try him, but not arrest him. So why are they so much interested in arresting him? Mm. Why not? Okay, you have your evidence, then let's meet in court. So all I'm saying is, for the betterment of all and for the system, see, it's better we create institutions that lives out outside us, not just by the person. I remember the time the former president came, people said in 1983 he was this, in 1984 he was that, uh, body language and all that. It did not work this time around. Hmm. Strong institutions live after whoever is there, not their personality. So it's high time we create build strong institutions that will stand the test of time. Not every time 
from the history of USCC in 2014 date. Tell me how has each of their head head of USCC how they've been how they've left the, the organization. Mm. None of them have left ceremoniously. They have all been removed either there's an allegation of corruption or the rest of them. None of them, none. Even the last one was a younger guy of uh, about 40. And we're so happy that the young guy got in there. How did he end up? He spent how many months in the US's, in DSS detention, detention facility? So it's high time we come back and look at. See, let's stop this media trial. It's not because of yeah, I've been here today, tomorrow, we have your other and that person. But the thing is, let the institution mm. be able to leave the test of time. That's what I want. A strong and working institution. I don't want to know who is there. I don't want to know whose party is there. But a system whereby you know that from the first day you get into office, you are accountable till the day you leave office. Yayabelo is ready now, anytime, any day to account of his stewardship as governor of Koki State. But it should be done properly and the right way. Not He, he should not be wishhunted. And it should be celebrated. Mm. I keep saying it. This is a young man who has attacked the title school and he succeeded. And every young man should aspire to be like him. That is my submission. Now, talking about um, building stronger institutions, just like uh, you proceeded, according to the trial judge, you know, that delivered the judgment justice, uh, Emeka Nguite, he said, uh, he said, any party who disobeys the order of the court is not entitled to be heard. This is in uh, response to the counsel to uh, former governor Yahaya Abelu to, uh, you know, grant his um, uh, client some time to uh, make certain, uh, certain arrangements. Now, according to the spokesperson, of the EFCC, he said that an official uh, invitation was sent to uh, Governor uh, Yahaya, Yahaya Bilu. Elsewhere, the judge also claimed that uh, the order of the court subsists even if there are irregularities. If you want to challenge the irregularities, you have to return to the court. And you cannot do that in absentia. So talking about building stronger institutions, don't you think the conduct of the uh, former governor uh, of, of, of Kogi State negates your uh, earlier submission? No. Let's, let's, let me start from the last you just said. The EFCC, you and I know, if really there was an, a substantive written invitation mm. to invite His Excellency, former Governor of Kogi State, His Excellency Alaji Adaiza Bello to the EFCC, it would have been flying on every pages of newspaper on social media. But that, but, but right? That's but one. That's, no, I'm that's, that that's one. The realm that's of, one. Uh, realm Two, of assumption I keep, I said this, I said this the last time I was here. I said, if the judge of the Federal High Court in Abuja was aware that there was a substantive order of the court mm. restricting the FCC from arresting or persecuting the former governor of Kogi State pending the determination of that case, that judge wouldn't have given that judgment. I think it's high time now the Chief Justice of the Federation steps into this matter and be able to settle these two law officers. There's a judgment that this man shouldn't be persecuted, and there's another judgment that he should be arrested. These are two conflicting judgments mm. coming from our judges. And now, this is why I keep saying that there should be a system whereby, and that's why I talked about system. Ordinarily, the issue about uh, Abelu, uh, former governor of the Excellency, Alaji Adesa, uh, Abelu, and the EFCC should have been on, like I call, a server mm. of the courts in Nigeria. That immediately you put in this matter, you should pop up that there's already a yeah, matter there's, there's already an existing judgment, judgment on, on this, this issue. So issue. that will now guide your own judgment, or that will now guide your someone or your, your submission when such or granting of such orders. But because it's not that way. Now, uh, what I know is that the former governor of Kogi State is a law-abiding citizen. Mm. He will try all the avenues he has based on law. Even when and he refused to... Uh, no, 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 no. See, now, what, why, why, why do I have... Why do I need... Why do, I need do you know if I go to court today, I mm. cannot represent myself. Mm -hmm. I need the services of a lawyer. Mm. That shows that even in my absence... But then you still have to be in the court to take no, no, plea two, two by things, yourself. Two things. By yourself. Yes, you are, I agree, you are, agreed. Your lawyer agree. will not take your plea for the you. The lawyer will not take my plea for me. Mm. No Absolutely. doubt about that. But where I find out that my appearance... 
I said something earlier. Why is the FCC so much interested in arresting mm. when you have already gone to court ahead of time? It has, from, from everything I understand about criminal justice, by this time already you have, you have passed the stage of arrest. Mm. For you to go to court, that means you already have evidences that you want to use. Like we had the UFC chairman said on national TV that he already has all the evidences he needs mm. to prosecute. So why don't we shift from the FCC office now to the court? Except you want to tell me now that you want to be the judge in this matter. But if you don't want to be the judge in this matter, you have respected the, the office of the judge. I have respected that matters of such should be determined in the court, which is what the Constitution says. Mm -hmm. You're already in the court. So why don't we move all attentions to the court and stop this media trial instead of you being interested in arresting. So that means you are interested. There's, there's, I said there was a political undertone to this whole thing. That means you are just interested in disgracing this man, not just even the, the, the matter mm -hmm. at hand. So the major thing is the matter has left the AFCC. It's now in the court. Now, when we get to court, if you want to do more findings, you cannot seek the leave of the court to say, okay, the evidence I have, I need this man in my custody to continue to investigate, to get more evidence so that he won't tamper with, 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 uh, with, with evidences mm. uh, and all that. But until then, why are you so much interested in arresting him? What I know, and I know at the end of the day, is this, this, is, this, is, this will help um, enrich our uh, judicial, system. judicial system and, uh, and, 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 and delivery of um, justice. Because the truth about it is, I'm enjoying the whole thing. Why am I enjoying the whole thing? I, I, I saw the U.S. system running to court. So that means he also knows that the court mm. is the last hope of the common man. So allow, if you enjoy that or that 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 that, that um, relief from the court then allow the other man also enjoy the same relief from the court certainly the whole dust will settle it is beginning to settle his excellency will be in court mm -hmm. his excellency will take his plea but let it be done legally and let him be sure that his fundamental human right is protected and which is something that has been why has the efcc now not gone to court to vacate that judgment mm that yeah, his excellency former governor Hogiste should not be arrested or persecuted but he went to the court of appeal when it was his own turn so I, you could understand that there's a lot of there's a lot of intrigues playing out at the end of the day we really understand where this whole thing is going to get us to but yeah, I put but, it to but, but, but then uh, but then the efcc chairman was you know uh, ethical enough to go to the court to you know seek to vacate the uh, the court order from Kogi state one would have expected it to you know to be the same situation with uh, Governor uh, Yahaya Bilo, as, yes, opposed yes. To, as opposed to, you know, uh, evading uh, uh, evading uh, arrest, because technically what happened uh, in his, uh, at his Benghazi uh, residence a uh, few weeks ago, it can be, you know, is I, I, I remember, to, I remember, to, I remember to, seeing to, it here, to evading arrest. that in this same country, in 2022, we saw what the FCC did when they went to the former governor of Flamingo State's house, Rocha mm -hmm. to see to you that they are arresting. Now, is there any pictorial evidence to prove that the former governor of Kogi State, Elijah Doiza Bello, was in that resident on that day at that time? No. But is there, the I'm official, calling, I'm calling, but the is there, official, is there, is there any, the official is there any, of the sitting governor? I'm calling, was, the, the, was, official, was, the official of the sitting governor, yes. But is, is there any picture showing that the official, the, we, we are, see, that shows that uh, the former governor of Kogi His Excellency Elijah Adel Isabelo walked into the car of the president, the sitting governor? Hmm. No. Now, that the sitting governor drove in, I told you on, on this program that the sitting governor is now the chief executive officer of Kogi State. Hmm. And whereby there's an issue between the citizens of a state mm. it's normal for a father to go and make peace because the, there was already going to be protests there was going to be chaos already and his presence there calmed the whole situation mm. after he left everything went cool and everybody was fine the fcc that i and you know they should have drones that would have been up on the sky viewing the compound to see if there was any movement of anybody coming out of the house and engine any car is there any picture of such so let's stop this media trial and let's face the real matter in court, the matter is in court already. If we can start discussing the matter, it becomes a uh, uh, prejudice. So mm. let's not discuss the matter which is in court already. Uh, the the judge, the sub judge, sorry, mm. the, the the judge, the judge will do justice to such. And I know, like I said in the coming days, the whole dust will settle, and we, all this is just because they are just trying to to, to create distraction with, because of the case in the tribunal. And uh, like I say. And this is what the people from my side of the, the divide will not want to hear. I keep saying it, I keep saying it to you tomorrow. 
PSDP has no case in court. So we should stop disturbing ourselves. We should come together and face governance and move the state forward. All we want is the betterment of Kogi State. All we want is the betterment of Nigeria. And all we should be doing at this time, elections are over, is to come together, unite as brothers that we are. Kogi belongs to all of us. Kogi belongs to the Igalas, the Beras, the Okuns, and every other minority tribe. And let's work together as one and move Kogi State forward. Kogi State is already on the right track. Things are already moving, and we should not be the one to put a, a, a squad on the wheel of in the wheel of progress. Mm. Okay, then, uh, as we put this uh, very issue to bed, let's talk about one more issue. Counsel to uh, counsel to the former governor, uh, Mr. Yahya Belu. Uh, I mean, he's a lawyer. He said, uh, Mr. Uh, Abdul Wahab Mohammed. He said, is in response to uh, the uh, to a statement from Justice Nwite. He said. Um, his client, uh, Mr. Yahya Bello, was not afraid of uh, coming uh, to the court, but he was uh, merely uh, afraid, uh, afraid for his life. And um, one be we begin to, it makes us begin to wonder: Is it that the EFCC they kill people in their custody? Do they? Uh, would the EFCC, you know, invite a man? with the status of um, uh, former governor Yahya Bello and assault him and put him through uh, torture, uh, one begins to wonder what uh, this uh, what this whole thing uh, is all about. And it brings me to the, uh, to the question. Do you think that the whole situation would have turned out more differently if former governor Yahya Bello had, you know, uh, had willingly made himself available to the EFCC at the very first instance. Now, when the lawyer of His Excellency was talking about um, him being afraid of his life, he's not talking about him being killed or tortured or anything in the EFCC detention mm -hmm. camp. No, that's not that's not what he was talking about. The EFCC um, don't have not heard of anybody, even as 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 minute as the Yahoo boy, I've not heard of any of them who has ever said that was beaten or mm. tortured by the FCC. No, that's not it. The FCC are more civil when it comes to that. I think when it comes to abuse of power, I think the FCC has not really gone that bad mm. in, the, in the in the face of um of it. But the thing is this: we all know the state we come from. The people on the other side mm. are all out to do anything humanly possible to see to it that. They drag His Excellency Adezabelu on the floor because they feel that while he was in government, yeah, there were some scores they needed Why to set. Why is the people on the other side of the divide? Who are, who, who That's are the, 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 the opposition, the opposition okay. party, the SDP candidates and the rest. Of you can see them going to the FCC, the, the FCC uh, office uh, headquarters protesting that he should be arrested, he must be arrested and the rest of them. And I keep asking questions. Who were these people before 2015? Hmm. Who was the candidate of the SDP before 2015? These were people that were also made by His Excellency Yaya Adezaya Abelu. So why is it that today the same people he made are now the same people who are now calling for his head? Why? I said it here that one thing I love so much about this man is he was able to come and change the dynamics of leadership in Kogi State, whereby young people now can now aspire to be something in Kogi and they are. I put it to you before now, the chairman of my local government was my father's age mate. Mm. They went to primary school together. Now if the chairman of my local government is my father's age mate, when will I now become chairman? And he left there and went to the State House of Assembly. But today, no. The man in the State of Assembly, if he's older than me, maybe two, three years different. So that means there's hope for me that tomorrow I can contest for such office and I get the office too. I can also aspire to be chairman in my local government. And I get there. I told you that I went to the State Assembly and I can put it to you that there's nobody in the State Assembly that's over 45 years. Mm. They're all young people. So this is, these are the things. So it's, it's high time we should stop this. We shouldn't always look out for how to kill our own, pull our own down. Something happened in Dubai some few weeks ago. There was a flooding in Dubai. And you saw that you, 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 you government came out to say it in clear terms that any citizen who posts that video on social media on, uh, for any reason will either go for six months imprisonment or pay a fine of, I think, £180,000. Hmm. Or both. Did you see such videos flying anywhere again? But no, in Nigeria, everything about Nigeria, we pulled our government down, we talk our government. The same way I believe that everybody is saying, kill him, kill him today, was awarded by a world organization, IMF, for being prudent. 
the same person now is so I will not I will not make no crew of ourselves to the international community. If the one that the international community will come out and say, No, this man, when it comes to his books, his books are clean, we now come and say, No, well, let's kill him. So what are we telling what, what are we doing to ourselves? Instead of us to be celebrating such a person and giving him more responsibilities to do, we just want to pull him down at all costs. It's high time, like I said, elections are over. This is time for governance. Let's stop this. Uh, around Cornell and all this. This is time. Let's come together in 2026, 2027 again. We'll go back to the league and by then we'll know if we, it's time to get power back to the other side or not. But now, we have a sitting governor. We should join hands together and make things work. And we should leave Yabin alone. Yabin and the FCC knows how to settle their self. They will shortly settle their self because certainly I know that both of them are law abiding. The agency and the Abin himself are law abiding uh, entities and certainly they will do the right thing at the right time. So enough of the media chaya and let's allow the court to do their job. So uh, on the final note now, where do you see this whole thing uh, uh, panning out uh, once the former governor makes himself uh, available uh, to the court? Now, I want every Nigerian to know and I want those from Kogi State to know that the issue of his Excellency with the FCC is a billable offense. Mm. And if at the end of the day it shows that what must happen must be him coming to the FCC, he will come. I know His Excellency will be in the next court sitting. That is certain. Because he's a law abiding citizen. He's someone who obeys the law. He's someone who knows the law. And so for him to have gone to the court to affect his fundamental human rights, it shows that he's somebody who knows the law and knows. See, Nigeria is a very beautiful country. We have a lot of laws. I think the only problem we have is the implementation. Mm -hmm. His Excellency will do the right thing at the right time when the time calls for All I call for is caution. We should tread with caution so we don't heat up the polity in the name of just pulling, throwing away the baby with the bath water. Mm. All right, then, uh, let's take a look at some um, other uh, issues making the rounds now. As um, a lot of the political uh, gladiators seems to already be, uh, to already uh, uh, st begin to look at um, the, uh, 2027 as um, just a few months uh, away. You know, uh, pictures uh, surfaced yesterday of uh, a meeting between, of a visit uh, by uh, the former... Uh, presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Mr. Peter Obi, uh, visited the presidential candidate of uh, the People's Democratic Party uh, alongside them, um, uh, Lamido, uh, Bukola, Saraki, and a whole lot of um, others. And this has generated a whole lot of um, reactions. Nigerians are saying that um, these politicians only, only care about. Um, uh, about the next election, not really about the citizens. Nigerians are saying that um, you know the there's a you know there's a plan for 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 some months now. There has been you know talks here and there for a you know me, for a major to form a a, a mega party to wrestle power from from the APC. What are your thoughts on uh, all of this? Because okay, let's just let's just set the tone for this uh, very. What are your thoughts on all of this? I was um, <coughs> a strong advocate and supporter of His Excellency Alaji Atiku Abakar for two decades. Mm. What changed? Now, I told those who were very close to me that if His Excellency doesn't get the presidency in 2023, then he was never destined to be president of the Republic of Nigeria. Mm. It's as simple as that. Now, um, when I see people clap their hands and welcome back um, Mr. Peter will be back uh, wishing that he comes back to the PDP, I look at them and I laugh. These are one of the reasons that people like us had to leave the party because the party has lost direction. The party was never prepared for opposition. They thought they were going to be in power forever, and then since 2015, they have been hitting and mm. running around, around, around and not being able to find their bearing until tomorrow. Now, Obi's entry into the PDP presidential race in 2019 cost the party mm. the victory because those who stood by the party through the ticks and turn, felt betrayed. The example of such person was uh, Kwele Madu, former Sen Deputy Senate President, who led the committee that recommended reconciliation and who led the committee that zoned the presidency to the north in 2019. Mm. Now, he came from nowhere. The party leaders in the southeast were angry and they worked against the victory of the party. Why? Because this same man cost them their victory in Anambra in 2003. And ever since then, we know what he was doing and saying in Abga. Now, that passed. In 2022, 
I saw him. We were at the declaration of His Excellency Elijah Atikwa Baka together. Mm. He even granted an interview that he came for his elder brother's event. Mm. Only for him two days after to go and declare for president. Without even telling the same pres the person he called his elder brother. His elder so, brother. like I was, I said it on this program that these guys are more concerned about power. We had somebody who was so desperate and, of power, to get power and got power in 2015 and you know the disaster he caused this country. Mm. It's not about coming together. I put it to you, no matter the coming together, if his Excellency, the President of the Republic of Nigeria, could have been able to defeat the system even after leaving power for close to 20 years mm. and now he's in government and you think this major thing they are doing and this will be the issue. This is not the, There are more issues. That can, see, I, give you, I give you a simple instance. This country, I keep saying that Nigerians don't really know what they really want. Mm. I was at the shops a few days ago before my birthday and I was supposed to pick up an item. Or not to me that my wife had seen the, seen the price tag on it. Mm -hmm. Before we turned to look back again, the sales boy removed the price tag. Okay. So I called the attention of the store owner and I said, why is he doing this? And he said, uh, dollars. And I said, can you imagine? Mm -hmm. And I asked him, when dollar came to 1,000, did you release, did you reduce the price of this thing? So Nigerians are our own problem, not even the government, not even the system. These guys are just regrouping again to come and deceive the, 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 the Nigerians again and tell them uh, we are going to do this. I ask, what have you been able to do in your own capacity as an individual? Mm -hmm. What have you been able to do in your own capacity as a former? This is somebody that was governor for eight years and not even a primary school he built, of one room he built to his credit. The only best, the best thing he did was to invest money in the bureau. His father had the li a lion share in. What are we talking about? This is somebody that claimed to have saved money for an umbrella state and saved the money in the banks he had shares. He was a major shareholder. So that means you use that man as money to grow your bank and, your, and people are clapping for him. I don't understand. And before I say that, the next thing you hear is I got the advice from a madman. He said, well, what are we talking? Are we really serious in this country? Do you really want to make headway? I don't think in Nigeria any reason person should be concerned about the major or coming together or holding meetings. That's not what matters now. What matters now is elections are over. It is time for governance. And I put it to you, even if Atiku or B match to for 2027, uh, my party will still defeat them in 2027. And maybe in 2031 they will merge the other way and maybe i will revise him by then i don't know what but as far as i'm concerned nigeria should not be distracted by that what matters to us now is electricity good news security and food on the table for our family but then should uh, be concerned about spokes, this spokesperson to uh, the peter ob presidential campaign council uh tanko unisa he said the meeting was just a mere uh was was just a mere uh, 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 visit it's all of, and it was just you know to discuss the state of the nation to discuss the the hardships the sufferings uh, nigerians are uh, currently uh, going through what are your thoughts uh, you, you, uh, on, on you know you know i'm a politician and when a politician says uh, a politician visits another politician you uh, you are you and i know exactly what that meeting is all about certainly they won't come out to accept there no politician has ever come out to accept that this is what he went to discuss or not discuss mm -hmm. i and you know see it's just as simple like I, I give I, I give this um adage from my place. I will speak in my dialect and interpret it. Mm. What does it mean in that at least? This is a dead body. This is a horse foot footprint. Mm. Will you ask who killed the person again? Mm. You assume it's the horse. So we all know that these meetings are all grouping, they are grouping and regrouping, preparing to see how they can and it's it it see are we making progress? Yes. <clears throat> can we do better? Yes. We should be more concerned about coming together mm. to support the government in power now. Pending in 2026, 2027, we cannot begin to decide, okay, they did it well this way. But for now, let's stop this distraction and let government focus on delivering on the dividends of democracy that this government has promised the Nigerian populace. With this distraction, you don't expect it's just like what's happening in Kogi, distractions here and there. Um, but the governor is resilient and is ready and prepared. We should be more concerned about is this person qualified for this assignment? than is this person from my party or is this person uh, from my ethnic group and the rest of them that is happening these meetings we all know all has political on the tone of all of a sudden you have been so concerned about nigerians that you're now visiting the members of the pdp about four or five of them leaders of the pdp in just one day thank you very much mr mr goodman and, and certainly i know we will soon hear it that he got that advice from the madman on open worker bridge who told him that you should go and see article and see the rest of them this is not what we need at this time enough of this destruction it is time to face governance his excellency the president of the republic of nigeria is doing his best with his minister to see to it that the country gets 
gets back on his footing. All I should expect now is for people to start pointing out the ministers that are not functioning well. Mm -hmm. And we should tell the president to show them the way out and bring him and reject his cabinet and let things begin to work. We have the minister of uh, minister of finance who is doing very well. The one of interior is also doing well. The NCT minister, Wiki, is doing excellently well. Mm -hmm. It's just that I don't know why he's trying to use allowing the destruction of River State. But anyway, he's doing well, so he's not even allowing the destruction of River State that affects his work in the NCT. We can see NCT has become a, counter, uh, a, a previous site since he came in into in, in as the minister of the FCT and the rest of it. We are not saying this. The last time we saw something like this was in the days of LFI. Mm -hmm. And since he came back, FCT has become a construct. So these are the things we should be celebrating. Not all this little, little distraction. Yes, there's hardship in the land, no doubt about that. But the government is on the right track and I do everything possible to see to it that in the long run, Nigerians will be happy and will be fine for it. You don't expect, Rome was not built in one day, so you don't expect magic. It's a process. We are working on the process. My party is doing everything within their powers to see to it that we live a country where Nigerians will be proud to be called Nigerians by the end of the tenure of His Excellency in power. And as we begin to wrap up the show now, just because you made mention of the FCT minister uh, in some wiki, back home in, in, back, back home in his state, uh, the sitting governor, uh, Fubara, uh, he has said uh, there are talks of him uh, planning to set up a, a, a panel to probe the eight years uh, of um, Governor Wiki's uh, administration in Delta State. In River, uh, in, in, in River State, beg, beg, beg your pardon. And um, this is in reaction to, you know, uh, events, ev recent events where uh, Governor uh, Wiki, a former Governor Wiki, uh, said that um, he made a mistake you know, anointing uh, Fubaya to succeed him and also, uh, uh, you know, asking, pleading for the, uh, you know, for the forgiveness of uh, his, of his, of his, uh, of, of his followers. What are your thoughts on the whole uh, uh, Wiki Fubaya uh, conundrum? What are your thoughts on all of this? Um, I think it's high time the leaders of the PDP calls the, pres the River State Governor to order. Now, if you have noticed, the river state, the, the, the beauty of the PDP, the leaders of the party, have given a blind eye to what's happening. And it says, it says just one thing. When you see a child doing what ordinarily he shouldn't be doing, you know that he's coming in because the presence of his father is close by, mm. or that of his mother is around, so he knows that he has a backing mm. if anything happens. All they are using Fabra to do now is to get back at Wiki because they feel Wiki cost them their chances of getting to the presidency, which was not Wiki's fault. Mm. But the thing remains that Fabra, as you know, is a young man and he's still young politically, he's still coming up. And he will still need, you don't burn the bridges just because you feel there are differences between both of you. You still need this man because he's a, Wiki is a force. When it comes to reverse politics, Wiki has imparted lives. Wiki has uh, worked. It's just Wiki. I think Wiki. Wiki is suffering the same thing that uh, the same fate that um, Alaji Adesa been is suffering from oppositions in the SDP. This is somebody who brought you into power, hmm. and few months or just less than a year into power, you're already fighting him tooth and nail. I don't think the truth is both of them know themselves very well. And I, I when I look, I, I watched it yesterday on, on, on social media that he was going to set up a panel to probe the former governor. And I started laughing. Mm. You were the accountant general of the state mm. while he was governor for eight years. So certainly you don't, there's no way you're you going to be, you're you going to certainly, be a party. You were part, you are not, you are good, you were a party to anything that happened when it comes to the resources of the state. Because you were the a financial officer of the state why he was the chief executive officer of the state so two of you worked hand in hand to deliver the project or otherwise what you think you are going to find out from your from your from your panel of inquiry and in the presence of the former minister that i know is the dogger fighter hmm. he has he has challenged the telescope repeatedly he said it to the face of the pdp you either do it our way or we back out and it, and he stood this gun and we know what 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 that caused the pdp at the end of the day so i don't think this is something to be worried about like i said the man is busy transforming the fct day and night and he's not bothered about what uh, Fabra is doing in, the, in, in in rivers but i tell Fabra tread with caution mm. because you will still need this man one way or the other don't be used against this man that's why my people say when the king sends you on the island, use your brain use mm. your head because when he, the, when the heat comes 
you might be the one that will receive it at the end of the day, not those who are sending you. So you should try to caution as a young man. It's not time to start burning all the bridges that brought you into power. Elections are still going to come in 2027. And by then, I hope you won't start crying that he's been, uh, he's been rechanted or by he's been, he's been uh, uh, marginalized because he's not from the major ethnic group in, in, in the liberal state. So we should watch every action we take. We shouldn't bomb bridges because we're on different sides of the divide. We are family. Mm. We are Nigerians. They are from rivers. They are brothers. We should let, allow the bond of brotherhood lead all and lead every of our actions, not because of our present gain. Yes, politics is all about interest. We all know. But as much as you're thinking about that interest, also think about humanity first. Because certainly, for you to uh, to 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 carry out your interest, you need to have a very good cordial relationship within you. And I do anyway. Politics, uh, 24 hours is enough to make men bridges and men fences and come together again. But I think. It's high time we stop running this kind of policies where we burn all the bridges because we are not the one in power mm. at the end of the day. So I, I, I know certainly they will come, they would, he won't even go for it because I know he knows he's going to indict himself if he sets up such a panel at the end of the day. Thank you so much for your very much um, insightful analysis on the program today. And we really do appreciate uh, your time you spent with us today. Thank you very much, my brother. That has been Ambassador Samuel A. Danjuman, APC Chieftain, you know, giving us his um, uh, piece on the recent happenings in the nation, talking about uh, the conundrum between the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, the EFCC, and the embattled former governor of Kogi State, as well as the rift between uh, uh, the present minister of the FCT and his, um, uh, so, and, and his um, uh, successor, uh, similar life for Barra. This is where we draw the curtain on today's episode of the program. Do all to join us again, same time, same station tomorrow. My name is Francis Adini. Bye.